Hey guys, welcome back. This is the Long Tail Build Series, video number 12. In the last video, we welded the seat stays onto the main triangle. In this video, we need to finish where we left off and uh, get the rear dropouts welded. And uh, then after that, onto the integrated rear rack. First thing we'll do is get these caps welded on. If uh, you followed me a year ago with my first build, you might have noticed that my purge setup got a whole lot simpler. These days, I just uh, I just run a single line to a shutoff valve. It turned out I never used more than a single line, so uh, someday I may go back to using a manifold with multiple lines, but that may be uh, quite a ways off in the future when I need to, you know, do lots of frames and save time but uh, for now I simply move the hose to the part of the frame I'm working on all right so here you can see I took out the foil and uh, I started to have trouble on the the rear dropouts and this has happened to me before where I start to get sparks and uh, sometimes the foil helps and sometimes it doesn't I don't know why it'll keep sparking uh, but in this case, the foil seemed to help. Okay, uh, now we can move on to the rear integrated rack. I've got my 3 quarter inch tubes cut to length. The next thing we need to do is bend the top running tubes. Alright, you guys know the drill. Stick my tube in here and bend away. Looks like we need to go just a bit more. And that looks like it did the trick. Okay, so here you can see the tubes overlap. We need to trim so that we're set up properly for a miter and that means no overlap. So I marked the tubes roughly where we need to trim. And uh, in the last video when I trimmed the seat stays, you may remember I used the milling machine. The cut had to be precise, but in the case of these rack tubes, precision isn't as much of a concern because most of the material will get mitered away. However, I do want to make a good cut while also saving time, so I took some scrap metal and made these triangular fixtures. When I got the tube in there, it kind of looked like, a, I thought it looked like a taco, a tube taco. Before we miter this, I want to first get the back end of the rack completely welded. And uh, my design on paper shows two cut tubes and then a wedge tube insert. I went with this design because I like the aesthetic of a sharp radius. I couldn't bend the tubes because there's no way I'd get such a sharp radius with the bender and I don't own a bender, so that's a problem. Uh, this thing is not a bender, it's a press and it's not capable of producing the bend I would need. So instead, here I am cutting a wedge from a tube. On paper it looked good, but in reality I ran into a problem. I actually cut the wedge and forgot to shoot the footage, so I made up this 3D model to show you guys. Cutting a 45 angle on just the wedge, uh, it elongated the diameter of its ends, so the wedge didn't fit. As of the making of this video, I realized the solution uh, too late, but uh, here it is anyway. I should have made a uh, 22.5 degree cuts on all the ends, and that would have solved my problem. However, at the time, that didn't occur to me, and my mind was like I was only thinking about how to make the wedge uh, that'll fit between in the corner there. So. I ended up doing something really weird which involved cutting a tube in half and then removing material from its center to make the tube thinner uh, and then welding it back together again. 
and then cutting a wedge, so now everything fits up. After tacking one side, it pulled open a gap on the other side. So to close the gap, I used some two blocks and clamped the gap closed uh, just long enough to get some tacks in place. Now it's uh, ready for welds on the back end. I used tape to hold the front end together and brought my uh, taco back out to hold it in plane. I could have left the rack in the fixture but thing is uh, it's quite heavy and would have made welding kind of a pain. And that arm thing I use it's not the greatest these days so I took it off. The other thing is I'm not purging. I thought it would be pointless after the fiasco with the cutting tubes in half and the wedges and so I just skipped on the, the purge. I gotta say the more experience I get with welding 4130, the more I realize that purging is not necessary everywhere. I do think that purging at uh, the frame's main junctions is a good thing, uh, like the head tube, the seat tube the bottom bracket and uh, the dropouts so still purge in those spots but sometimes like in this case I won't purge. Do you guys know what time it is? It's taco time! This uh, taco thing turned out to be really handy. I even added screws to index the cut. pretty good and uh, I think we're ready for tax and I don't know why I'm tacking that one spot so many times maybe I had trouble getting it down in there and uh, yeah just tacking up the rest here I am using a tape it's a masking tape to hold the the rear tubes back in place so that I can just get a tack in there Masking tape's pretty good because if you're just hacking, it's really handy to hold things in place. Uh, the tubes never get hot enough to cause a problem. Oh, uh, there's the one that gave me trouble, but actually I think it didn't give me trouble. There's three tacks in there. <laughs> That's why I, I tacked it three times. I forgot. <laughs> Alright, so I am now welding the frame. And you see I got my purge in there, just one line. Alright, so around this spot things got really crazy. It started sparking and I immediately stopped. I tested the torch and then I tried to do it again. Uh, I put some foil in there and that seemed to help. 
Alright, so right after the sparking shenanigans, the arm that holds the frame decided to stop working. It just, uh, it wore out, so, yep. Here's the, uh, um, the ugliest weld. Yeah, good thing it was underneath and kind of hidden away. I had to stop, and so I took off that, um, the joint, and I made a new one. So it like rotates and it turns and that did the trick. It's adjustable so I can like tighten it down. And then I continued on. All right, the seat tube junctions are all welded. And uh, the ugliest part is kind of hidden right inside there, so you can't see it, and uh, which is good. <laughs> and now I'm uh, I'm welding the rear supports on, getting those welded to the dropouts. Here's those welds. And that is a wrap. We're done welding all the main tubes. In the next video, we'll cut and slot the C tube, then weld some brake bosses, and finally take the bike for a little test ride. Don't miss it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next week.